Anita Linsell is a self-made businesswoman whose career was based primarily in the steel industry. She began her working life in banking with the Netherlands Bank of South Africa, now Nedbank, and worked in their offices both in London and in Johannesburg. On her return to the UK and after a brief period with the Foreign Office, she moved into investment banking and was later drawn into the world of international marketing, where she spent most of her career. During that time, she held senior executive positions with multinational companies. In 1980, Anita Linsell set up her own international marketing company, supplying steel products and agricultural machinery to territories in Africa. Maduguri in northern Nigeria is currently very much in the spotlight as Boko Haram tries to make it one of its strongholds. Anita first visited that town in the 1980s, introducing new techniques to the farmers of that arid landscape, and she is now very concerned about the welfare of that area. She was a pioneering businesswoman working in a sector that would have been perceived as very much a man's world. She established the first Anglo-Japanese trading operation in London on a joint venture basis. Similar initiatives with major Indian and African companies followed. International business necessitates travel, but in Anita's case, it gave her a passion for travel that has continued throughout her life. Her travels have extended to both ends of the earth, searching for polar bears in the Arctic and in the Southern Ocean, walking in Shackleton's footsteps on the final sector of his journey across South Georgia. Shackleton's spirit of exploration appeals deeply to Anita, so when she realized she would be able to visit his grave on South Georgia, she took along a stone from her garden to leave beside his gravestone, so creating a moving personal tribute across the generations in one of the most remote places on earth. In less remote places, Anita has been able to indulge her passion for art, and over the years, she has assembled a fine international collection of paintings, sculptures, and bronzes. In another passion appropriate to one with a pronounced spirit of adventure, Anita has for the past 40 years maintained a private pilot's license. An appetite for challenge is one of Anita Linsell's most pronounced characteristics, and it takes many forms. Some are charitable, such as her work as a trustee of Global Cancer Concern, or for a period running a research station in the Seychelles, involved in the introduction of what was considered to be an extinct species of giant tortoise. She has also chaired for 16 years the management committee that oversees the running of Dingley Hall where Market Harbour, near Market Harbour, where she currently resides. The greatest challenge that Anita has taken up after a successful business career centers on this university. This engagement began in the mid-1990s when she enrolled as an undergraduate in history of art which enabled her to enhance and discipline her command of a field that had al always been a passion. Within two years of graduating, Anita had joined the standing committee of the university's alumni association, as she, and as she inevitably rises like bubbles through champagne, she soon became chair of the alumni association. In the course of what became two terms of office, she worked tirelessly for the, this university and its alumni. Her main objective was to effect change, to raise the profile of the Alumni Association, a key university body established under our founding Royal Charter. Initiatives varied from high profile events, fundraising, Team Leicester in the Edinburgh Marathon in 2006, to constitutional revision. Awarding fellowships and grants to students assisted her cause. Membership of the University Council for six years enabled her to lobby for the change she considered necessary. This change was ultimately achieved and her vision fulfilled when the seeds that were then planted grew into the organizational structure that now exists. The end of Anita Linsell's terms of office did not mark any diminution of her commitment to this university. She has continued to serve on the university court and has also recently assumed the role of lay member of the university's social sciences ethics committee. She has supported the university's recent fundraising appeals 
for the new galleries wing at the Richard Attenborough Center and the ambitious cardiovascular research center of Peel and is a regular attender at events organized by the wider university committee. Taken as a whole, this amounts to 20 years of selfless committed service to this university and today is our opportunity to say thank you and to honor her extraordinary contribution to the life and well-being of this university and its graduates. Mr. Chancellor, on the authority of the Senate and of the Council, I present to you Anita Linsell that you may confer upon her the degree of Doctor of Laws. Well done. Well done, Anita. Congratulations to you. Thanks for what you've done for our university. I was here as well. Yes, good stuff. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and fellow graduates, this is a very special day for us all. I think you will agree. I've attended many of these ceremonies in the past um, in my capacity of chair of the Alumni Association. I've always enjoyed them because they're happy events. Everyone is excited and full of anticipation. Um, when the letter from the university arrived on my doormat back in December, I had a flashback to one particular ceremony. At that ceremony, I arrived in due time, uh, went to the dressing room, went to the place where my gown would normally be waiting for me, and there was no gown. Well, I called one of the dressers over immediately and told her, what my situation was. She went away and five minutes later came back and handed me a gown, a beautiful red gown. Well, I was completely shocked. I said, I, I, I protested. I said, I can't possibly wear that gown. I would be an absolute fraud. So I was politely uh, informed that if you don't put it on, you're going to miss the the ceremony today because it starts in about five minutes. But by this afternoon, we will have the correct gown for you. So I put the gown on and I thought it was absolutely magnificent. I thought, and in that split second, I thought it might be worth signing up <laughs> for the course to wear such a gown. I didn't realize in years ahead that I would be able to wear this gown in my own right. And for that, I thank the university the President, Vice-Chancellor, the Senate and the Council. I feel very proud today. And while I'm at it, I would also like to thank two others who I think may be in the hall today. And that is um, Cathy Whitehurst and Nigel Armitage. When I became chair of the Alumni Association, it was a very small office and those two um, backed me 100% in the ideas I brought forward to instigate change. Now, back to the business of today, which is my fellow graduates. A lot of what I was thinking about saying, our President and Vice Chancellor has already said. <laughs> so, um, but I'll say it anyway, if you don't mind. Today you've reached a milestone in your lives. You've worked very hard to obtain your degree. Now, this is an excellent degree from an absolutely first-class university, and so you can now go ahead with confidence. Um, when I was thinking of what to say to you today, I analysed my own career path. And it appeared to me that I have followed three main rules to obtain any goal I had set myself at any point in time. And those rules are determination, application, staying power. 
It's not rocket science. Determination, application, staying power. Of course, you always have to have a plan. Because if you don't have a plan, it's very difficult to get to a destination. In my own case, it was always a five-year plan. But like most African states, after three, I tore it up and reassessed. And the wild card in all this is luck. Now, if she comes anywhere near you, you have to grab that opportunity with both hands. I hope you enjoy your celebrations today, because I most certainly will. I don't think this is the last brush you'll have with academia. As you add to the knowledge of the subject you've, you've been studying, you may decide to change direction. It's, it's very competitive out there right now. Or you might just decide to study something for which you have a passion, whatever. So I hope we see you at the university again, either for study purposes or to see or to attend one of the many alumni events that take place throughout the year. So on that note, I say I hope you have I hope you have very good celebrations and I wish you all the very best on your onward journey. Thank you. <laughs>